It's nine o'clock and it is Saturday, August the 28th, and I'm headed out the lane right now. I'm gonna go ahead and try crabbing. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the miles today and see what I can do there. I've been thinking about it. You know, I used to crab that river a lot. I'm really curious what the heck's going on there, my old lady. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm on my way now to go get bait, and I'll probably be an hour, hour and a half getting bait, getting back here. And then thanks to the semi-automatic tri-line baiting system, it's gonna take me under an hour to bait up. I'm only gonna go ahead and bait up two of my lines, so that'll be over 2,000 foot, you know. So we'll go ahead and see what happens here. I'm uh, getting ready to get on this road, so I gotta put this phone down for according to local ordinances. So I'm back now, and I've been making a whole bunch of these tables and devices and selling them. And real quick, just for the people that don't know, this is called a zip bag. Basically what it does, it attaches, it stays right on the trout line, and all you gotta do to load clams in it, and bait up and all is just undo the zipper of course it's easier with two hands but yeah it makes freaking baiting up like super duper fast and it's awesome so i'll go ahead and put the links to that video that explains all this and i'm going to do more videos about operating this thing correctly and i mean as you can see i got all this crap on it been building and selling the crap out of these devices and these bags they're freaking awesome people love them all right i just sat down to bait up and before i forget because this is very important People keep on opting out to go ahead and buy this chair. I charge what I pay for these chairs because all I do to them is slightly modify them. It is the perfect chair for this table and people keep on coming back to me after they buy the whole setup and going ahead and getting the chair because they can't find the perfect chair like I've got set up here. I have these, I sell them at cost, I modify them. I put 30 minutes of my time into modifying them so that they're perfect for this setup. And you know, I don't charge for that 30 minutes. So, you know, please, when you're getting this whole setup, please get the chair. But over an hour round trip to go get bait and it is 10.45 now. I left here at nine to go get bait. And I've got both lines baited and I'm ready to roll and everything loading the boat and hooked up and everything. All right, getting ready to lay out line number one and lay number one. All right, just laid both my lines in the water. I mean, I really have no clue what's going on here. I have not crabbed here for, I mean, since I was a crazy psychopathic 20 year old. So, you know, it's hard to tell. I don't, I went ahead and laid in everywhere from four foot all the way to 12 foot you know different areas that you know i kind of remember but not really so you know, we'll go ahead and see what happens i'm gonna go ahead and uh film the first run on the first line i laid out so that's the answer i don't know if i said that's 100 percent correct but i'm gonna go ahead and film me actually crabbing the first line i laid out the first time i've run it so and it's you know it's pushing uh pushing noon now so we'll see what happens here in the tide it's going out but it's kind of almost low i didn't even look at the freaking tides this is a very spur of the moment thing you know it's not like i planned to go crabbing late <laughs> you know i was like all right yeah you know it, something came up to where something went away so i could go do this so we'll see what happens here
since I'm running a whole lot of line, I can only crab till 3.30 because, you know, I'm crabbing commercially. I'm crabbing with over 2,000 foot. But what I can do is once it hits 3.30, I can go ahead and yank one of my lines in. I'll still have one 1,200 foot line out. And then I can continue to crab that one 1,200 foot line as long as I keep those crabs just to eat and don't sell them. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I mean, it makes sense, so it's, I'm probably wrong. All right, so for an idea on the quality that's going out in this river right now, what I had was five good number ones, which is round six, and you gotta make sure that they're hard. I had one female, and I had one number two. The number two was hard. Everything's pretty hard, but the number two, it was just slightly, it's like five and a half, one quite six, so not bad. Got a little bit of boat traffic to contend with. I mean, it's not horrible, but there is quite a boat that goes by once every, say, two to five minutes or so. I don't know if you can see that over there of course they see a line puller on a boat and if they're crabbing they immediately stop and start throwing traps out actually there's one spot where i used to put a pretty short line in it, was, it did really good it was actually taken there's uh one other definite commercial guy out here and it looks like one recreational the recreational he looked like he was in my spot and i know that i'm the one who first crabbed that freaking spot i mean probably not ever but like commercially and used it consistently. So if he's crabbing it, I'm sure it's from me. He, somebody got it from me because nobody was ever near that spot ever. This is kind of like my tester line. I got this end really deep, like 12 foot. So it's gonna be a little bit loose and the other end's in like five foot. As you can see, I'm on mud in both lines. He was an eight. The other line shallow. But this whole line's on a freaking edge, a good edge. Be nice to get a bushel. Bushel of good ones. He was in six. He tried to get away. And as you can see, the line, it just keeps on getting tighter because it keeps on getting shoulder couple jellyfish usually not good they're probably more out towards the mouth but I don't feel like running out there he wouldn't let go I'm gonna explain all the crabs as I catch them like their whole life story that's going to be what I do from here on out. I'm going to talk about how they're hanging out. Just, you know, and then there's this orange thing in the water. And the one crab says to his buddy, he's like, hey, what the heck is that? He's like, hey, is that a female? And the other crab's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's some hot female crab. We got to get on that. And then they get over to it. 
and what it ends up being is food so they're like oh food okay that works <laughs> that's what happened then they're like oh it's this this food female thing it uh it turned into this roller coaster type ride thing that has food on it awesome so they ride it up and then they get thrown in there <laughs> those are all keepers looks like they're all good ones so five good ones on that real little line it's not too bad it's not like i sat around and let them soak like i laid these freaking things out real quick and ran them It'd be nice to get a basket of good ones i'll be pretty happy with that and that right there is what all the miles river crab fuss is about i mean that crab it it looks different than other crabs like the rustiness of it is different i've always called the crabs in miles river tiger crabs because for some reason that's why i started calling them years ago when i first started crabbing in this river commercially so they're a different crab and you know they got a good taste and they're usually the quality is pretty gosh darn good the quality over there on that little bit deeper edge and i know it's a tiny bit harder over there the bottom is the quality of the crabs was better and there weren't no sooks so you know there wasn't quite as many of them but that line's nowhere near as long as this other one so really that line that little one's doing better so it's kind of got me thinking and what i thought might happen to go ahead and get this long line and lay it on a harder bottom and see what happens i'm thinking about laying it right underneath that bridge over there i've had some really good luck laying it right underneath that bridge so maybe it's it's a lot of freaking crap to get caught up on and as expensive as these you know as hard as these freaking bags are to make and as expensive as they are it's kind of a risk because all the crap on the bottom but you know, i've never really lost the line completely i always get it back somehow but there if i did lose one i wouldn't really want to dive down because who knows what's over there and that edge is freaking crazy all right, so I just ran that freaking line, and the first one I laid out, the longer one, and I knocked the crap out of them. I mean, I'm talking darn near a quarter basket on that one freaking line. Mostly really beautiful crabs. One throwback I know of. I'll go ahead and call through them and see how many I caught on that one freaking line. So I consider that really good. I can't imagine how good I'd done if I'd have got out here at the right time. I mean, that's, that's all. Awesome. All right, so all together on that one line, I caught two dozen keepers, okay? some twos a couple sooks peeler but most of them were good hard ones so i'm coming up on one third of a basket of good ones so far i don't know exactly the science behind it but for some reason like your second third runs it'll start to pick up if you're on crabs like the first one doesn't really tell you too terrible terrible much for whatever reason like the clams or all bait really it has to start working and getting the scent out through the water and you know when the crabs are feeding they make a freaking noise this is my theory anyway they make some kind of a noise like some kind of a feeding noise and it attracts other crabs so it's kind of like this domino effect all right so it's a little bit after 12 now the idea struck me to go go crabbing today at nine o'clock and i had to go get bait bait up but thanks to the semi-automatic trial line baiting system it made this possible it's a little bit after 12 so the idea struck me a little bit over three hours ago to even start this venture and all the drive time to get bait to get here offload the boat i mean all that stuff and i've got over half a basket of crabs on the boat those are my good ones those are my sucks those are my twos i still got that one peeler there so that's not bad at all i'm gonna go ahead and keep knocking at them i'm gonna go ahead and show this last run on this uh this long line did really good i'm gonna go ahead and film that i don't know if i just said that in this last part but the miles river to get into this water right here with this boat i don't live close to the miles river i mean it's a little bit of a hike
Dude, you weren't even on base. As you can see there, that was that run that I just filmed and got me one of those Miles River monsters right there. All right, the wind picked up a little bit and it's coming out of the south. So for crabbing, you couldn't ask for a better wind direction. You know, if it picked up a little bit harder, that'd be even better. But it picking up like that is definitely good. Bad thing is, I didn't even look at the tide charts or anything. I just came out and put the boat in the freaking water. But it looks like tides getting ready to be dead low so that's bad so usually right before uh low completely low or completely high tide there'll be like one last pretty strong hit seems like that's kind of a pattern that i've seen so so far not bad coming up on a bushel of good ones those are my twos those are my sooks still got that same one peeler and i saw a sponge crab if you're a trot lining and you see a freaking sponge crab that thing should never even go in the boat. I mean, if the second you realize it's a sponge crab, put it back over. So I saw one of those, which is good. So, yep, just gonna go ahead and keep picking at them. Um, you know, I gotta stop at 3.30 commercially, so hopefully I can get that basket right there filled up before 3.30. That'd be pretty freaking awesome. Oh yeah, and it's one o'clock now, so it might happen. It really might happen. And to bait up, I bought a bushel of clams. I baited up just over 2,000 foot all together. And it only took me a half a basket of clams. So with the other half, I went ahead and gave it to somebody else because they were going crabbing today. So, I mean, all in all, you know, it's kind of on fire out here, especially coming out late like I did. And, you know, if I'd have started correctly and everything, there's nobody out here either. It wasn't, you know, there's nobody really crabbing. Plenty of room. I mean, it's, it's nice and it's on fire here. It's pretty crazy. The south wind's picking up a little bit, and on that real short line, it got eight crabs on it, and they all look good keepers. Maybe a two or one or two twos in there. But, yeah, hopefully uh, before this tide pushes all the way out, get that basket. Almost got it. 
all right it's almost two o'clock and i have definitely got my basket of very very beautiful number one crabs i mean these crabs are incredible and that is a very serious basket right there <laughs> i got a piece of twos i got a little piece of sooks so not bad i'm gonna go ahead and keep knocking at them a little bit i guess i might go ahead and knock at them till 3 30 i finally looked at the tide chart and apparently here low tides 3 30 so i'm gonna keep knocking at them see what else i can put in the boat and a lot of people seem really confused about this but that is what a bushel of crab look like the top of it need to be busting open it needs to look like that and it needs to weigh 40 pounds 45 with the basket but a bushel of crabs is 40 pounds worth of actual crabs that is what a bushel looks like all right now i'm just yanking my line in as you can see here and i got that one full basket and i gotta call these out still so i don't know exactly i'll know in a second and i still gotta run the other line right now it's pushing 215 so we'll see where we are once i get all the line in the boat so all the lines in the boat everything's all done just gotta go ahead and get these crabs to market it is almost three o'clock and i mean that's not bad got a basket and almost a half of good ones got almost a half of twos and got like a quarter basket of sooks so not bad at all so thanks for watching and with like comment share and subscribe